Let me straighten that up a little bit. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. How are y'all doing today? Welcome to All Things Gumball. I was out today checking my locations and you know, I, I know I've told you a little bit about what's been going on with me. Let me rephrase or explain again what has happened. When March came around last year, um, people were closing their businesses here in the Dallas area, the Dallas, Texas area. And I was really worried about the vending business. And I talked to a friend of mine who I feel like is a genius. I, I really do mean that, and I'm not joking around. I, I really think he's got a very high IQ. And I asked him, um, how is how was he you know how was he doing and he told me before all the businesses shut down that he put himself in isolation for three weeks already at that point and I asked him but how do you get your groceries and milk and cheese and things like that and he said well it gets delivered people deliver that or those those items you know and I thought about, you know, perhaps the vending business may really go downhill to the point where I need to do something else for work. Even though um, the vending business is my primary source of income. So I thought about what he was telling me. I thought about the uh, delivery people, the people that work in the warehouse. And so I thought to myself, I could probably do one of those two jobs. You know, I can stock shelves or you know, box up stuff to ship out, or I can drive trucks. You know, I used to drive a taxi cab. I drive all over the city when I check my vending machine, so I'm on the road a lot. And if you haven't checked out some of my other videos, I've put a, I've put a few videos of car crash compilation videos on my All Things Gumball channel because just watching those kind of videos over and over and over gets you to really focus on the road. When you start watching videos like that over and over and over, you're always constantly watching your surroundings, your, you know, what's behind you, what's in front of you, what's beside you. Because when you watch those videos, you never know, you, you know, every 10 seconds there's a new crash or something. And some of them are horrible and some are very light and they're just like simple fender benders. And they can come from all over. They can come from any different direction. I, what I have found is uh, probably one quarter to one half of all accidents that I've seen in these videos, a quarter to a half of the ac uh, accidents that happen in these videos are in intersections. So I'm really thinking that intersections are really some of the worst places to not pay attention. When I was a kid, my parents always told us, look both ways when you cross the street. And I think that should be said for when you're crossing through an intersection look both ways before you cross through the intersection maybe someone is running that yellow light and wants to make the red light wants to make the yellow light before it turns to red and as you go because it's green they're just finishing up their uh they're passing through that intersection and you get clipped or hit or whatever so as i said i I've, i'm on the road a lot i feel like i'm a pretty safe driver to be honest so I thought I would go down and get my CDL because I don't want to work in a warehouse. I don't want to be stuck inside all day long. And I decided to get my CDL. It ended up costing me quite a bit of money. I would say almost $4,000. And <clears throat> you can you can go to schools that are even more expensive, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, you know, $10,000. Uh, in fact, one of the places that I went to today, they have simulators to teach their CDL drivers how to drive and I was talking to the guy that was um, you know the manager there and I was asking him about these uh, simulators and he was telling me they have they cost a million dollars a piece they're so well made a million dollars they had three of those there that company spent three million dollars on um, those three simulators. I'm here right now actually where those simulators are. I don't want to tell you exactly where they are. But I did get my CDL, my commercial driver's license, and I was immediately hired on by FedEx and I had to go through a bunch of training um, with a driver working beside me. 
And that means we're basically on the road 24 hours a day for five or six days a week. And I really kind of ignored my business, but in the meantime, I was actually um, lucky enough to be able to sell it, to uh, sell the business to, uh, you know, sell my vending business to someone else. Um, and about the same time that he decided he didn't want to take, you know, take ownership of the business, um, FedEx let me go because I had a very, very minor fender bender. These are the photographs of the fender bender here. First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I to actually volunteer for this. And as you can see, there was no damage on the vehicle. I was dragging two trailers behind me. It, it, it was unbelievably painful. And I'm in a very awkward, small part of town where the roads are very narrow. And I couldn't get past this vehicle and I asked the guy that was training me if he could help me out. And he hopped up in the front seat, in the passenger seat, and he was looking in the mirror, and he was telling me to pull forward, pull forward a little bit to the left. And as I did, I ended up snagging the vehicle. And as you can see, there's no damage on either vehicle. And the police came and wrote a report, and I, you know, gave them my driver's license, so I was the one that was responsible, um, even though I was doing what my trainer told me to do, which I, you know, being fired from FedEx, I think is really unfair. The policeman asked me if I could back up the trailer. It was actually, like I said, two trailers. And he asked me if I could back up both trailers. And I said, no, I'm in training. I don't think I can, I mean, I know I couldn't do it. I said, I, I can't do it. And I know it's very, very difficult to back up two trailers, let alone one big trailer. And I said, but I'm with a trainer if you want to ask him. And so the policeman asked my trainer if uh, he could back up the vehicle, which he did. And then as he pulled forward, he snagged the little truck again pulling pulling the truck into a phone pole and doing a ton of damage on that small little vehicle. When I came back to Dallas after that trip, I was fired immediately. And I asked them, I said, why am I being fired? And they said, well, because you're on probation. FedEx won't allow any accidents when you're on probation. So I'm not working as a truck driver right now, even though I do have my CDL. And I did pay quite a bit of money for it. At the same time I got fired, the guy that I sold the route to, he decided he didn't want to take the route. And I think partly partly due to two things. One, there was a coin shortage at the time. I don't see coin shortages or signs that point to a coin shortage at this moment. But he was saying because of COVID and because of the coin shortage, he doesn't want to take the, take the uh, risk and, and take over the ownership of the business. So he basically handed me back the business um, and then he ended up giving me quite a bit of money, not money, but he gave me a, quite a bit of candy. So I just started back running the route and I have had a few people ask me to remove the machines and I asked, you know, I asked why and they say, well, because of COVID. I did go to one place where the machine was gone. I don't know where the machine went to, but the guy that took over the route, he said that that machine didn't look like any machine that I have. And it may, it may have been belonging to someone else and someone else may have removed mine and replaced it with theirs and then took theirs out or something but my machine is not there anymore and i trust the guy that i sold the route to i trust that he didn't you know steal anything from me i, I believe he just handed it back to me as is i know he didn't steal anything from me so i asked them i said well would you like another machine back and they said yes they would so i'm going to bring another machine there and i am losing locations since I have such a large number of machines, when I lose a location, it's like a scratch on the surface. If you have two machines and you lose one location, you've lost 50% of your income, basically, on, those bus on that business. You know, so for me, if I lose a location, it's, it's a scratch on the surface. So it doesn't, really, it doesn't really hurt as much. So I do sympathize with people who lose one location. If you have 10 locations and you lose one, you're losing 10% of your income, if you know what I'm saying. But I am checking machines today and I've been out in the last couple of weeks. I don't have a lot of enthusiasm because I really, I kind of get the idea, I know what's gonna happen when I go out. The machines aren't gonna be used because people are, 
you know, they're afraid of sticking their fingers in them. You know, they're afraid of, they're really afraid of getting the candy out of the slot where the candy falls out because they don't know who's been putting their fingers in there. Maybe some kid who just been, who was just playing with a dog or something or just, you know, digging some gum off his shoe or something like that. So people are kind of cautious. So I think that uh, what I need to do is do a different type of work, which I'm working on doing. So I'm, I am working on another type of business. Today I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna actually get started on a new business. Someone is walking beside me. <laughs> uh, there's a guy, I don't know if you can see him in the mirror. About there, right there, do you see him walking past? Anyway, today I'm gonna start a new business. I have a second business, but it's not doing that well, and it is eBay. I have vending machine parts for sale on eBay, and I am selling vending machines, uh, the machines that are being taken out of location. I don't think I'm gonna find locations at this point. Uh, so if I lose a location, that machine's gonna be sold. Um, and if worse comes to worse, I can always help people find locations if that's what they want. Um, and I'm gonna start another business. And today I'm buying one item that's going to help me with a new business. And that's part of the reason why I wanna change the name of the channel to Gumball, because I really don't want it to be just about Gumball machines and the vending business. There's so much more to me than just Gumball machines. You know, I have a family, I have kids. Um, I mean, I just, there's so many things that I would like to do. I wanna get my pilot's license. I wanna travel, you know, I love cooking. So basically, if I change the name to Gumball, I can, I can sense, you know, I mean, people can still find me, but also, um, I'm not taking that far of a step away from all things Gumball, the name. And Gumball can kind of be like a nickname. I know nicknames have to be given to you by someone else, but I kind of feel like I'm giving myself the nickname of Gumball. So I think Gumball at this point is going to represent just who I am and what I'm all about. So if you guys are watching just because you want information on the vending business, I'm telling you the channel is going to change. I'm not going to, I mean, there's only so much I can talk about when it comes to vending, you know, and I really feel like I've covered so many subjects or so many topics. I've kind of gotten to the point where I don't know what else to talk about. But there's things that I can talk about, like cooking and uh, my faith as a Christian and things like that. Uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to make this video also is because I am at a location that has a ton of semi-trucks. And they have two schools here. And there's a hotel in this, um, on this property. And when I first came here, there was one machine. And I bought that one machine from someone else. I didn't put the machine here. I don't think I would be able to put the machine here. It's got it's got a fenced in area. You got to go through security to get in. And there was one machine here. And I think it was just one canister. It was one head. It was a one headed gumball machine. All it had was gumball. And so what I did was the first thing I did was I brought in a three headed machine and I swapped it out. I took out the one headed gumball machine and I put in a three headed vending machine which had which had candy and chiclets and and things like that and so then after a couple months I brought in a second machine so I went from a one-headed machine to now six heads six heads and then I went from there to eight I, I brought in two bigger machines so now I went from two three-headed machines to two four-headed machines and I started looking around I just started walking around you know I, I would drive up to an area uh, go inside the building and look around and see if there's room for a machine so right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven machines working in this one location. And I believe that I've hit every single building in this property or on this property. So from one headed machine, let me count all the heads that are in this, in this place. I've got eight, 16, 19, 22, 29, 29, 29 canisters of candy. And this place is one of my uh, most excellent locations, I have to say. It does very well. It does very, very, very well. And as I said, it was one location. I bought it from one guy and he charged me, I think it was $50. And, you know, 
to be honest, this is a great location. When you guys find locations like this, or if you are in a location like this, like let's say you're in a car dealership. If you have your machine in the lobby in the car dealership, look for a parts department. See if you can put a machine in a parts department. You know, in the repair department or whatever. Did I say park? Parts. P-A-R-T-S. I might have said parks. Uh, I'm a little tired today. So anyway, I just wanted to encourage you guys. Um, uh, keep at it. The money's, the money's still rolling in, you know. And uh, I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to try to venture off into another business. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go. But again, like I said today, I'm going to purchase my, per my first item towards that new business. And like I said, I'll tell you a little bit more about it as I go. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you for, uh, you know, watching these videos. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, give me some feedback if you like. Uh, I try to get back to the people who give feedback. Sometimes it's not possible because there's so many people that comment. You guys are welcome to call anytime you like. If you have any questions about the vending business, I'll do anything I can to help you. I will catch you guys on another video or you'll catch me on another, on another video. Have a good evening. Have a good morning or have a good afternoon.